now, hello, and welcome back to the third part of my WD SA500 NAS SSD testing. And today we're going to be doing tests over 10 gigabit Ethernet. We're going to be testing these SSDs in a RAID 1 environment. Then we're going to be testing some standard WD hard drives for comparison. And then finally, we're going to activate SSD cache to show you the difference between them. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, I'm utilizing Synology's own proprietary 10 GBE Ethernet card in this DS3018XS, which is a Pentium powered NAS. On top of that, I've enabled Jumbo Frames or MTU to 9000 on the Synology NAS. On the local PC, in this Windows PC that I'll be using today, I'm using a Sonic Solo Thunderbolt 3 adapter. And if we go to the properties and make our way into the configuration, you will see that I've also opened up the MTU or the jumbo packet to 9000 here as well. Now, in order to do this test today, we're gonna to be using mapped network drives. And I will remind you, just like I remind you in all of my tests, that when utilizing this uh, kind of setup, what you'll end up doing when using screen recording software is you will see a performance dip when using screen recording software. So do bear that in mind in the result. There will be an impact of using screen recording software. Let's scan the local area network and find our Synology NAS, and we'll see that the 3018XS has appeared twice. That is because we're seeing it both on one gigabit ethernet connection and the 10 gigabit ethernet connection. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount those SSDs over the one gigabit ethernet connection just to show you that they are there and the difference between one GBE and 10 GBE. So let's get this logged in here. I apologize for the proximity to the keyboard and over this one gigabit ethernet connection, we're going to set up the WD Red SA500 SSD RAID 1 configuration. And we're going to call this one the Q drive. We're going to click next. And this will now add that drive for us to test in different testing software. But now we're also going to set that same drive up in 10 GBE. So once again, same login. And from here, we're going to find the SA drive. So once again, that's two 500 gig WD Red SSDs, but this time we're accessing them over 10 gigabit ethernet. And we're going to call this drive T going to click there, click finish, and then we've added it. And finally, we're going to add the traditional mechanical hard drives. So let's log in there. And with these mechanical hard drives, these are traditional WD Red 4TB hard drives in a RAID 1 environment, just to give you a basis of comparison. And we're going to call that drive H for hard drives. I know, super imaginative. So now we've set up our three network drives. Right, so we've set up our network drives and now we can make our way into the testing with Blackmagic and AJA. First and foremost, we'll look at AJA. As we can see, there's all of our mapped drives there. Now the first one we want to look at is of course, that one gigabit ethernet connection utilizing the SSDs, just to give you some idea about the bottleneck of one GBE. It's worth highlighting that for 1GBE, I'm even using a wireless connection. So I'm not even using 1GBE, and more than likely, I'm going to be utilizing maybe 60 to 70 megs per second due to it being a wireless connection. If we have a look at the Wi-Fi connection and we have a look at the strength of that connection, we'll be able to see that the packets we're running at is not even a full gigabit at 866 megabits per second. So if we decrease from there, if we once again test that 1GBE file, uh, the 1GBE connection of those SSDs, the following speeds are apparent. Now again, this is because of limitations like 1GBE and Wi-Fi, and this speed is gonna be useless to everyone. We're not even gonna waste any more time on that. But what we do want to see are those SSDs over 10 gigabit ethernet. So let's give that a look. And straight away, we are getting some great speeds there. Now, it should also be mentioned that the read speeds will be hampered by the screen recording software that we're utilizing. These are two WD Red SSDs in a RAID 1 environment, so both disks are being read and written from at exactly the same time, and therefore, these are the kind of speeds that you would expect. However, with hybrid storage, you could potentially look at 
a particularly high speed too, although never quite as high as a pure SSD RAID. Now, if we stop this test here and we come out of there, we can make our way into the Black Magic application and have a look there. Once again, a one gig test file. From there, we will select those mapped drives that we've gone for. And once again, we are going to utilize the 10 GBE connection of the WD Red drives in a RAID 1 environment. Now, Black Magic utilizes a different testing system. It's definitely designed by people that utilize video editing and video files in a big, big way. So speeds from here will be different. If we get this sped up, we will see a gradual increase because the file type we're dealing with at one gig is just too small to get these file speeds up first time. This is going to quickly reach its max height and we're going to see a true uh, depiction of that read and write over 10 gigabit ethernet with two SSDs in this RAID 1 environment. Read, read speeds appear to be higher in Blackmagic than they were in AJA, but that's because of the way Blackmagic deals with its speed test. And historically, particularly with MTU at 9000, we have seen Blackmagic speed tests while capture software is recording to be higher than those of normal uh, recordings without it on. So we can have a look here and we can see that the disk speed is you know, settling around the 700 megs for write with the read capping at around 500. But once again, you can probably add a few percent on top of that if you didn't let the screen recording happen. So we are seeing some great speeds there. So what we want to do now is see how this compares with hard drives using SSD caching. So for now, what we're going to do is stop that test and now make our way into the next stage of the testing. From here, I'm going to make my way into the hard drive configuration. So that's the hard drives being accessed over the 10 gigabit Ethernet connection on their own. If we start this test, we see the numbers going up. And again, because this is two hard drives in a RAID 1 environment, there is going to be the limitations that you would expect from mechanical hard drives. We're not going to see those impressive heights, but given that each one of these drives does promise some, this is a WD Red uh, 4TB hard drive, these drives on their own would generally give you 120 to 130 megabytes per second. But because there are two of these drives in a RAID configuration, we are seeing much higher write speeds and of course lovely high read speeds because in this RAID 1 environment, both disks are being accessed at the same time. So if we end this test here, we can make our way to the final steps of our testing, where what we're going to do is access those two SSDs. We're then going to dismantle the storage pool that has those two SSDs, and then those two SSDs are going to be turned into cache to support that storage area. In my next video, by the way, I will be doing Iron Wolf tests, comparing its performance with that of the WD SA500, but I'm gonna save that for another video. And carrying on going forward, I'm going to dismantle this RAID and use these SSDs for caching. So it will invite me to remove the storage pool. It will then delete all the data from those SSDs. I have to enter my password. And from here, those SSDs will now be completely wiped and deleted. I will then go into the SSD caching area and create an area of cache, of read and write cache of 500 gig to support the four terabytes of storage. Um, typically, if you are going to do SSD caching, it's worth remembering that you're probably going to need around 10% of your overall capacity um, of your hard drives in SSD for caching. So for every 10 terabytes you have got of storage, you're going to require one terabyte of SSD. And you can obviously round up to that where appropriate. So in the case of these four terabytes in this storage pool, we're going to have that 500 gig of SSD for cache. I'm gonna fast forward now to the deletion of this storage pool and the creation of that cache. I'm saying that the drives have now been removed so we can make our way into the caching area and create our cache. We want to create read and write cache. We click next and select the two now freely available drives. 
Ignore this message about compatibility. I haven't updated the latest firmware on this Synology and the latest firmware includes these disks in the compatibility. We will then mount this on the storage pool in number one and that is our WD Red 4TB hard drives. We then click next. We will select these SSDs in a RAID 1 environment because of read write cache and we will let it utilize the entire area of space. From here, I'll explain that I'm happy with the SSDs to be wiped, and now we're going to create our area of cache. And this will allow us now to reconduct those speed tests on those WD Red 4TB hard drives and see how they compare now that we've got caching enabled on that storage pool. So we're gonna let the SSD cache area be created. This shouldn't take a huge amount of time. And once it's created, it's just mounting it now, we will be able to both monitor the performance of our SSD cache here, as well as view the results of our tests in real time using AJA and Blackmagic. In the meantime, I'm gonna set things up here so we can get the resource monitor on screen, so we can see the behavior of the rest of the system during the course of our caching tests. Let's minimize that as much as we can, but apparently we can't. And we'll try and move these around so we can see them a little better. And on top of that, we've got the storage manager there and we can see the two SSDs as the cache is being built. And once again, if we look at the uh, testing software, because right now it's just running a background test using DSM, just Quickly, going through the SSDs, we're seeing the performance during the setup of the cache. We'll be able to shortly test our WD Red 4TB RAID uh, 1 with that SSD caching enabled. I'm going to fast forward to the completion of this cache. Right, so our area of SSD cache has been enabled and is supporting the storage pool 1, which, as already mentioned, is our two 4TB WD Red hard drives in a RAID 1. I will stop being painfully repetitious. So now all that's left to see are what are going to be our performance benchmarks using that one gig file once again, but this time using the hard drives over 10 GBE with SSD cache enabled. Let's have a look. Remember our speeds before were around 300 to 350 megabytes per second right. And our write speeds there seem to be already going higher. Our read speeds, it's too early to say, these will change over time. On top of that, we will of course do an AJA test too, just to see how these performance benchmarks differ. But right now, what we're seeing is not dissimilar speed results in disk speed tests from Blackmagic, but again, Blackmagic does test remarkably big files, and it may be the case that we're going to have to bench test at 5 GBE. So let's take a look at the 5GBE test result. These will open things up a great deal more and allow bigger, longer test results overall. After this, we'll of course be conducting AJA. And once again, I do ask you guys to reserve full judgment until the end of all of the parts of our SA500 WD Red speed test. And that includes the comparison with Ironwolf. But these results I'm getting at the moment are a little less than I would have liked if I'm perfectly honest. But again, Blackmagic isn't really the testing software for this environment. And these big old files can lead to degradation over time as the system has to work harder for them. So now we're going to disable Blackmagic there and make our way back over to AJA. Now AJA, I hope to get some more reliable results overall. The reason being with this, you have a greater flexibility of resolution without the variable rates and we can still test the one gig file, but in these different resolutions. So now we can test this and test our results. <coughs> now, these results seem unusually high, and I think that's because those hard drives were on the spin. Now, I think we're gonna get a few more reliable results. So I think we can ignore that first stage of testing and have a look at what speeds we're getting in this SSD cache support. We are certainly seeing network speeds and greater density of traffic coming through during the speed tests. And if we move that resource monitor to below, we can take a good look at these results side by side. Now, 
it, I would say that the results are less than I would have liked at this time, and I think I will look into it, but I think it would be remiss of me not to publish these results as is, and then go through later on in the conclusion, because what I'm seeing right now is still great speed early on, and I think it's the density of those files, and of course, the capture software I'm using, which is always going to take the lid of the real height of these performance benchmarks. But I'm going to end things here on this 10 GBE SSD testing session. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do stay tuned for the comparison between Seagate Ironwolf and, of course, WD Red SA500 uh, in between their own NAS based SSDs. Don't forget to subscribe if you found this useful. Click like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.